publisher Awakened Realms is known for their story-rich games. Is this War of Mine one of those games? This is the review for the board game This War of Mine, the good and the bad about it. By the end of this video, you will know if this game is for you. We have six burning questions that we will answer, but before we do that, Yanis, what is this game all about? Misery. It's about misery. You start out bad and then everything starts getting worse and worse and worse. Until you lose. Yeah, pretty much so. So that's uh, this war of mine. But what happens before you lose? Oh, yeah, right. You are just citizens. Ordinary people caught in the middle of a civil war and you're trying to survive. To do that, you go outside of your comfort zone of your home to scavenge and get stuff and risk everything you have to get a bit more to try to improve your living conditions and stay alive until the war ends. So at the beginning of the game you get some survivors and each of those survivors are very unique. Some might need cigarettes, some need books, some feel very bad when somebody else is hungry. If we would be there then we would need board games or else we're dead. So by scavenging and going out you're trying to get all these things things to survive. The biggest problem is that while you are scavenging, bad things will happen. You will find people that aren't too friendly. Maybe somebody will go and try to rob your place. This game is all about this experience of living on the edge and trying to survive. And since the place you're staying is also uh, already like a huge pile of rubble and things, you can try to search for something they can use there as well. Build different items like bed or radio that will help you survive, feel better, improve your morale and do other stuff. And this is a cooperative game, which means all of you play together, but all of you also control all of the characters. You will never know what will happen outside. It's just always different because you have this huge storybook, the book of scripts with a lot of texts that will give you options, stories and everything that will improve your gaming experience. Now let's get to the review part and the first question is... Who would you buy this for? Boom, shaka, boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Scavengers and story lovers. I think when you talk about this game, you just automatically have to mention two things. One is the scavenging system, because I think that's the most fun you have can have yeah, in this it's game. it's very unique, yeah. As I said, you risk with everything you have, your morale, your health, your items, to get stuff to just barely survive. I think the best scavenging system I have played on board games, as well as the story, the story is very, very, very good, but also dark. And I, I think you're gonna talk a lot more about it, but just be prepared that you will have some tough decisions to be uh, making in this game. Well, mine's very specific and niche. Mine's solo gamers who are not squeamish. Well, first of all, I think this is pretty much so in a solo game. You just decide what you do and you execute. There are no extra rules if you're playing two, four, six or one. It doesn't matter. Why squeamish? This is a very dark game. And when I say dark, I mean dark in a real life sense of things. There are people struggling with depression, misery, hunger, and the decisions sometimes you have to make are really tough. If you play games to escape the reality of the world, this might not be for you. But if you're okay with exploring these themes, then this might be a perfect game for you. For example, eating a dog. Would you eat a dog? No. But in this game? Maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Top three best things about this game. Two. One. I'll start with the third one. Go ahead. Which is building stuff. After you scavenge a lot of materials, wood, components, electrical parts, you can start building and improving your house or living space, like building a bed, building a workshop. First of all, there's so many stuff to build, which is awesome. And you can even have a new ideas and find new stuff to build. When you finally build something, you lose weight from your shoulders. Finally, I can sleep. It gives you this light at the end of the tunnel, which feels amazing. And I love that building and scavenging system. My third is the teach. This game has done something that I haven't seen somewhere else, where you kind of unlock new rules as you play. You start off with this small little rule book called the journal, it just glances over most of the rules. But as you go and do those things, things will come up and it says, congratulations, you've unlocked three more advanced rules. And it's a very unique way of introducing this uh, because the, all the extra rules are in this uh, book of scripts, just hidden between the actual like narrative of the game. So you don't know where it's gonna come up and how it's gonna come up and when you're gonna learn that you can eat dogs which is actually pretty early on probably you don't have to do that but you know that you can 
Next one is dilemmas. And dilemmas here are very, very tough and they feel real. You have to choose between saving somebody's life and sacrificing their life to save your own. They feel like they matter and mm -hmm, you're always definitely. left feeling like that was so tough, but you know, we survived. Somebody's knocking at your door and yelling, please help. What are you going to do? That could be a trap, you don't know. Yeah. But yeah. they might need help. Yeah. If we have guns. We might open the door. Yeah, we might. As well as the consequences of your actions really felt real. It wasn't there just because the game needed it to be there. It really felt like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. That would yeah. happen in real life. They and actually I enjoyed it. They actually say in the rules that you should approach this gameplay as an like a RPG, uh, like a role playing game, and just you know role play through it. That is a good suggestion. And this is the only way you should play. You shouldn't concentrate on what your goal is, like survive or anything. Just you can be this nasty survivor who just cares about himself and tries to survive no matter what and who he has to sacrifice, or you can be this empathetic person who tries to help everybody. Which spoiler alert is very really tough to do. My second one is the replayability. There are ton of cards. There are so many cards and each of those piles might seem small, but they have done a fantastic a job. Depending who you leave guarding the door, uh, narrative is gonna go that way or one, another way. And so much is just putting these cards, just drawing them in certain order will change up the game from the previous one. So I feel the replayability is definitely there and a lot of it. And the last one is it's so thematic. Mechanisms here complement the story so much. Definitely, yeah. Everything you do feels like it's spot on. It's great. The problem, of course, is that theme is very dark. It and we're going to probably talk about the bad things uh, mm -hmm. right after this. So stay tuned. <laughs> if you're okay with that, uh, the story is amazing, yeah, really. Yeah, that's what I have as number one as well. Like, narrative is everywhere. Like I said at the previous point, depending on who you leave to guard your shelter, the story might go that way. Depending who you rescue, depending where you go, depending what items you have when you go somewhere, depending what do you talk to people or trade with them. This book, like, drives the game just, wow. I mean, you have to experience it. It's it's uh, it's amazing how everything you do matters and might drive the story forward, even though it not necessarily is a story game, right? It can feel very mechanical and very like strategic. I think both story lovers and very mechanical bureau yeah. gamers could enjoy this. Definitely, definitely. Worst things about this game. So let's talk about the bad things. Yes, there are also some bad things in this good game. And <gasps> let's spoilers. You said good game. Was that a review? And surprise, we already got to the review part. It's a good game. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Yes, please yeah. subscribe. Yeah, please, please. please. <laughs> We're gonna name different problems here. Things that we feel like could be problems for you guys. And we're also gonna rate them from one to five, how bad it is. One being you just dropped a d dice that you rolled really highly, like a six, and then you yeah. drop it down, so you have to re-roll it. Five being you leave the dog at home so it doesn't get eaten, and then you go scavenging and you come back and somebody ate your dog. You're going first. What's the problem you see in this game? Length of the game is gonna be a problem, for example, for me. This is a game you can't probably play in a quick sit down. It's, well, I'm gonna say at least three hours. At least. I mean, you might lose real quick, right? Yeah. For example, for me, I needed to leave it set up. There is a save system where you still have to gather all this stuff up and then put it back down. But yeah, the length of one game takes like three plus hours. Yeah, I would rate this problem as a four. Yeah. It's the same for me. The way I enjoyed this game the most, you already mentioned it, I just left it open. And if you have a table space where to do that, it's great. Just from time to time, go and play it a bit. But playing it in one setting, it's really tough. Also, maybe with the theme and just the planning, it just feels a bit slow. And that means those three and four hours goes even slower than you're actually playing it. When it rains, it pours. Meaning when bad things will start to happen to you, they will come in bunches. One person can die from your team and that means you can get food in the scavenging phase and that means that will happen. So it goes, goes on and on and on. You will feel like... Uh, I mean, I could start a new game, I guess. A lot of characters react to situations of other characters. For example, this guy feels really bad if somebody's hungry, and then he is miserable, which is bad. So if you're already doing bad, this guy reacts to that, and he's bad, and then everyone's feeling bad. I describe this game as it starts out bad, and then it gets worse. I'm gonna give this actually a two. 
because it depends on the player you are. A lot of people are gonna enjoy the constant challenge and punishment that is thrown at you trying to overcome it. So depending on your person, it might be higher than two, but generally I'm gonna give it a two. Also another thing is it just complements the game. It yeah. shouldn't be easy and it's not. My thing, and I put this as a good thing, but it's also a bad thing, is the teach. That, hey, you get to unlock a couple of rules as you go, but sometimes you'll have a situation where you're like, what does this mean? But you can't find it because there's no normal rule book. They do state like if you come up on a rule that you can't figure out, just make the best assumption what it should be. Okay, I'm gonna pretend it's that, but did I miss something really important? I'll give it two as well. This problem was the biggest at the beginning when you just started to learn. Because yep. it also, this journal shows you that you need to start out step by step, meaning you just set it up and then start playing. But it's sometimes annoying because you, at first you need to make decisions that will, you know, matter later on and you never know how it will matter. Yeah. So it can get frustrating. And also I agree that sometimes you just have to wing it. Uh, but after playing a few times, you just get used to it and it's not a problem. It will be a problem for the first uh, few times for sure. Just be prepared for it. This thing you already mentioned, but it's the multiplayer. Yep, that was gonna be my number three yeah. as well. You wrote it down that it's a solo game. Uh, I agree with that, but I mostly enjoyed it with two players. But of course it feels like a solo game. Yeah, I'm gonna give it like three. It's in the middle for me. It's not... A minor thing because I think a lot of people will be disappointed and again it's not a hugely big thing if you know this and now you know might not be a three for you anymore if you're a solo player how long is the honeymoon three two one until you win <laughs> what do you I have? have until you beat the game I have an asterisk where I decided the last moment or until it beats you you're not gonna win in your first try right you're not gonna win in your second try as well, right? It's gonna take a while, right? It's gonna take a while. If you really want, you know, that, that last ending to get to the end, it's it's gonna take a couple of games. Figure everything out and just get lucky. I mean, there's luck involved, obviously. Until I won the, for the first time, I had this honeymoon for sure that I love this game absolutely. I just wanna go back back. And then when I won, I thought, great, I'm gonna put this in my shelf for a while, all right? And then I'll come back after a while. Yes, you wanna read all the events and see how it ends and you wanna beat it. But there is, as you said, a lot of replayability here. So even if you lose the first few times, there's no problems getting back in and trying it. And there's time. also an expansion, which I think introduces kids into the game. Think deciding about the dog was tough, try deciding about the kids. So My wife would say that for the dog, it's 10 times harder. <laughs> the best alternative? Watching documentary on animals being going extinct and dying out on this planet. Two, one. Oh wow. This one. Which is it? Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, mine's Seventh Continent. Seventh Continent is a big card game and its theme is nowhere near this dark. It's darkish, but it's all fantasy, it's all made up. And it's also about survival. You have a deck of cards that are your actions and skills and uh, they run out and then you have to eat to replenish them. And if they run out, you die. And there's always this constant sense of dread. Plus the narrative, I mean, it's mostly narrative in that game and is just so full of story just like this. So I felt that those give me the same sense of story so much story and oh my god we're gonna die soon what do we do yeah mine is Robinson Crusoe and it's about scavenging it is building stuff it's it a is. cooperative game it is it's very tough to win it, depending on the scenario but yeah there's also dying and some dan dangers and animals yeah. that could kill you all that stuff but not close to this one other than that I felt like it's, they are very very similar this war mine is more story driven because yes. there's a huge way, book way with more, yeah. a lot more text and story. Uh, but Robinson Crusoe is, tells the story in a different way, making this event deck, which is super fun. Yeah. Also, <laughs> worker placement. And each time oh, you yeah. play through a, like a day, put yeah. your workers there, then the night happens, storms happen, weather happens, all that. So I think this is really, really good alternative, this one. Uh, what are you doing there? Uh, nothing, just erasing mine. Yes, that's, that's a good alternative. <laughs> <laughs> and now the final rating. Mine's gonna be the longest rating I've ever given on this channel. World record of the longest ever rating on this channel is... I have fantastic realistic solo game. Uh, I have fantastic plus as well. Uh, I think it's almost a must have for me. I really, wow, really okay. enjoyed it. It's awesome. But also when I just like finished it, won it, I'm not looking to go back into it again. But that said, all the bad things we talked about, it doesn't matter for me. 
mostly yeah so yeah, that's why if they don't matter to you as well and you enjoy you think you would enjoy this mechanism and this story then i mean it should be a must-have for you yeah. it's brilliant design yeah for me it's a fantastic game as well but it's a fantastic solo game with a realistic and dark theme for example my wife would never play it like ever I didn't even try to offer like, hey, do you want to play a game where you're constantly starving and are in misery and might have to eat the dog or a cat to survive? Do you yeah, want a divorce? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But if you're fine with that, I think this is a fantastic game that you should try uh, at least once. All right, I hope you know now if this game is for you. Be sure to like, subscribe and do all the good things. Yes, please do. And uh, see you next time on our next video. Yeah, bye. Bye. You know what I'd like them to do is take this basic mechanism and just put it in another theme. Imagine yeah. like Nemesis survival kind of game where you crash on somewhere and then you have to go out of your bunker and scavenge among like aliens maybe.